Okay, here's a quick walkthrough of some exercises about how to learn how to use loops to simplify your code and to make it more efficient and maintainable. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step and then it gets a little bit more complicated at the end, but you'll see hopefully through doing this process, you'll learn how to apply loops to various uh, problems. So let's take a look here at number one. So it's pretty clear what this is gonna do. So let me go ahead and run this. And this is the output we would expect from number one. Let me go ahead and just make that big. It's a little noisy here, I'm at work, and uh, you know everybody's you know, doing their thing. So you see, I got one, two, three, four, five. And what I've done is I've used basically some print statements. Print one, print two, print three, print four, print five. And you know, this code works. But what we wanna do is we want to eliminate any repeat code. So in this case, that would be all these print statements are extraneous. So what we have to look for is the pattern involved here. So the pattern in this case is clearly one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a loop. So for x in range, I'm starting at one. It goes to five, so that means I have to put six here because that's how loops work. It's not inclusive at the end. I'm going to indent this print statement, change the one to an X, and then eliminate or delete, I should say, all of these pr uh, print statements. Now, if I run it, and then I take a look at that, scroll up, and you can see that I still have the exact same output. Okay, so I took five lines of code, and using a loop, I turned it into two lines of code. Now, part two, number two. I want to do the exact same thing, essentially. Again, I have repeated code, uh, but I also have a sequence of numbers in this case I'm looking at. So I'm starting at zero, I'm going to four. So the exact same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and make a loop, four. And this time I'm gonna use the index as my variable name because this is the index of the word. So E is at index zero. Uh, the dash is at index one, index two, index three, index four. And the range here, it starts at zero and it's gonna go up to four. So I should put five here. Or I could put length of word so it would work with any string, but we'll, we'll just put the five here to make it, easy, make it easier to understand what we're doing. So just like last time, I'm gonna delete all of these extra ones. I've gotta indent it so it goes in the for loop. I'm gonna put index. I'm gonna go ahead and run that and just check it, make sure that it works. And you can see here, I still get E dash boy. All right, moving on, number three. Now number three looks a lot more complicated because there's, there's more code, but it's the exact same principle. There's, there's no change here from the first, first two examples. I've got some repeated code and then I've got a sequence of numbers that I'm looking at. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I'm doing the exact same process. I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a for loop. And again, this is an index. Oops. And let's see what happened there. There we go. For index in range, my range is 0. And we said 7. So I'm going to put an 8 there. Then this section of code needs to be indented. And then I can delete all the extra code. And don't forget, here we have the zeros. This is going to have to be indexed now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to run it. And hopefully we'll get VSCO. Okay, you can see now VSCO. So this basically found all of the capital letters and printed them and not the lowercase letters. So V, S, C, and O. Okay, moving right along. Number four, now we're starting to get a little bit more interesting, a little bit more complex. This is, requires a little bit of extra work, but you can see we still have a sequence. We're still at zero, and then we got zero, one, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm gonna do, and there are other ways to do this, I know before people start messaging me and leaving comments. Yes, I know we could do this a different way. 
Uh, but I'm trying to do it this way for a certain reason, which hopefully will become clear later. So I'm going to be starting at zero. I'm going to use X in this case in range zero. And I'm going up to five. So again, I'm going to use six in this case. And let's say print. So if I did print X, for example, it's just going to print zero, then one, then two, then three, four, and five, and up to five. But what I want to do is I want to keep adding a letter each time, or adding a number each time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a string. And so we'll call it, I'll call it message, doesn't matter. Uh, message equals, and I'm going to make it blank. And what I'll do is each time through the loop, I'm going to say message plus equals str string x. So I'm converting the number to a string. And I'm going to say print message. And what that lets me do now is to delete all those lines. And now if I run it, I should get the exact same output. Oops. Okay, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now notice, and this is important for later, because I put this inside the loop, okay, it's printing every time. If I take it outside the loop, it will only print the final result, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's going to be very important for solving some of the next ones. Okay, so number five. Now this gets a little bit more complicated. So number five, we're counting backwards. So we're going five, four, three, two, one, zero. But what we're count, but what we're doing here is we're doing basically this same thing but one, two, three, four, five, six times. So what I could do here is copy this. Well, I'll copy the whole message thing here. So what you, what you really want to do is recognize kind of there's a pattern here. So this printed out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the last you know, sequence. Okay, so. So basically, if I run this right now, it's going to give me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, we just saw that. But what we want to happen is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, etc., etc. So we've basically got a sequence inside of a sequence. So what I'll do is I'll say for max in range, I'm starting at 5. Going to zero, so I'll just do negative one, and I'm counting down by negative one. Okay. Actually, that's an incorrect. That should be a six, because this is a six. So then in here, I'm going to put max, and then I'm just going to indent that. And so if I get rid of this and run it. Okay, well, almost got it. Zero. You can see I did it, but it's still adding. So after I print message, I actually I can actually put this inside the loop. I'll put message equals quotes. So let's move that there. Because each time that the main loop is done, I need to reset it. So that was my, my mistake there. So let's try that again. Okay, and there we go. So the first sequence was 0 through 5. The second sequence was 0 through 4. Third sequence was zero through three, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can see how we took this concept and then we put that in here because we recognized that there was a pattern that we'd already seen. Okay, and as you do these types of problems, you'll start to see more and more of these patterns. It'll be easier to spot. But you can kind of think your way through them if you know what you're doing. Okay, now, this next one is pretty interesting. It's very, 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 very similar to what we did. Oops, wrong way. What we did here. Okay, so I can, in a way, I can use that almost as my. All right, put it, I can use that as my kind of template there a little bit. But you notice we also have 
the opposite coming in. So we got 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. And again, I know I could do this a different way with some slices and things like that, but we don't want to do that. We're, we're practicing loops here. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 is the same problem we've already had. So I could just go ahead and actually just kind of copy that. Why not? Um, it's basically number 4. And so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put that in there. And I want to start, and this, this will give me 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay. Let's test it, just make sure it's working. I sure got that right. Okay. So we've already got half of this problem solved. Okay. So we're just missing the 1, 0, 1, et cetera, et cetera. So what we got to think about is this pattern. So we got 0, 1, well actually nothing, because the 0 comes from the other half. So we've got nothing here. We've got 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's clearly going to be a, I'm going to put it, counting down. So what I'm going to do is the following. For max, for max in range, 0, 6. Okay, and I did that same mistake. So message equals blank should go here. It doesn't have to be message. I just, I find that easy to use. And then I'm going to put that into there. So let me test this and see if it does what I want it to do. Okay, so it's okay. So I'm still getting okay. That should be unindented because I'm getting too much output here. So let's run that. Okay, so you can see here I'm still getting this right part of the equation: zero, zero, one, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. Okay, so now I just need the left part. So that has to come first. So to do that, now I'm going to be counting down. So I'm going to say for x in range, max, because I'm starting at the max, I'm going down to 0, I'm going down by negative 1. Okay. And then message plus equals str x. So it's essentially the reverse of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. And you can see now I've got the exact same result, and I can delete these lines. Now, of course, in this case, this is actually longer code. But what, now what I could do is I could, put, I could make that 30, and no matter what I put there, it's going to work, whatever values I use. Okay, so that's, that's the power of using a loop. But we'll put that back to 6 so it matches. And now this last problem, okay, is exactly this problem, but we're adding spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that. So essentially what we've got here is we've got three parts. We've got spaces plus the left side plus zero plus the right side. Now in my code, I combine zero and right into one set of code. That was this section here. Okay, that was that section there. Um, I could have combined it left and zero. So I could have put I could have put that here, but I chose not to. Um, so what I need to now do is just to add the spaces. So the question is, how many spaces do I need to add? So if you count these, on the first line, it's 5. Then it goes to 4, then it goes to 3, then 2, then 1, then 0. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say for x in range, now watch this, uh, 0 to 5 minus max. 
And I'm going to say message plus equals space. Now, I know in Python I can do this differently. I'm doing it this way because when my students get to Java next year and they can't do that other way because it's only in Python, they're not confused. Okay? So, and I'm really trying to get them to practice loops here. Okay? So, yes, I do know there are other better, easier ways to do this before anybody starts commenting. So, what I'm doing is I'm adding spaces. So, the first line, there's five spaces. Minus max, max is zero. Then it comes around. Five minus max, which is one, is now four. Five minus two, five minus three, five minus four, and five minus five, no spaces. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And you see we got the exact same result. Okay, so that is really the trick to these types of questions or problems or whatever you want to call them, is you need to look for patterns. And in the case of these last couple, you need to assemble it piece by piece. Okay, and really think about you know, where you're starting, where you're ending, what you're combining. Okay, this one was pretty tricky because of the five minus max thing, but it's, it's something that you'll see in, in various you know, programming activities and exercises and contexts. So it's good to you know, kind of get an idea of how to do that. So that's it. That's how you solve those. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And hit like. Appreciate it. Take care.